Greetings dudes and welcome to another video. This is going to be deck report week uh, 13. So it's been 13 weeks since the last limited forbidden list or the uh, first deck report that I've been doing uh, as a series in this channel. And uh, today I'm going to be showcasing you a uh, deck that uh, I've talked about this channel in the past, but this is the first time ever actually playing it in an actual tournament. And it's kind of strange to say that because I did play it at a 50-man uh, tournament that had really massive good pricing. Um, and it's kind of unorthodox or weird to be just picking a very like strange deck uh, in an environment that you kind of have to respect the better decks of the format and maybe have a better comfort pick. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is, as I always do, I'm going to be just skimming through the deck profile. If you're here just for the deck profile, just watch the first few minutes. If you want to see the explanations, and stay tuned for the rest of the video, because there are a lot of explanations I'm going to give. Probably not a lot of people know how this deck works. But yeah, uh, without further ado, uh, let's begin. So, three Shinonome, one Scion, one Nozuki, one Hoyo. That's it for Water Valence. You have Buster Baron, Vis uh, Triple Viscount, one Marquis. These are the Fire Valence. I'm just going to keep them separated because the uh, the explanation is going to have going to be imperative by showing them. Uh, as other supplementary uh, Pendulum monsters, we're playing the Mythical Beasts. So. Three Master Cerberus, two Jackal Kings, and one Garuda. And the last Pendulum Monster, which is the only high skill in the deck, is uh, Kyudo Spirit. That's 18 Pendulum Monsters. As for the non Pendulums, we have triple Fenrir. We have triple Altergeist Medusik. And one Null Wisp. I'll also be explaining this in a moment as well, uh, like after explaining like the valence stuff. In total, that's 25 monsters. I'll just put this uh, in this pile right here. Spell cards. Uh, you have Conic Wizen and Shirabancho. Triple valence solo activation. Triple Prosperity, Triple Small World, Three Talents, and a Call Buy. That puts the deck at exactly 40 cards. <laughs> Esther deck. Um, Link Karibo, Artemis, SP Little Knight. IP, Beyond the Pendulum times 2, Exit the Pendulum times 1, Selene, Appaloosa, Avramax, one of the MVPs, um, Access Code, Arclight, Arctos, Baguska, and Typhon. So, uh, before I show the side deck, I should ex be explaining the deck as a whole. So this is where the explanation comes in. So, for those who are unfamiliar, uh, and I have talked about it in, in this channel, so if you want a little bit more in depth on like the play style of the deck, I do have videos showcasing the deck in, uh, like, in action. But Valence is basically a Pendulum strategy that debuted on Tactical Masters. It, they debuted alongside Runix and Labyrinth. However, they never really took off as a, a strategy. Uh, the way this deck works is you have two factions, Water and Fire. And the way you want to play the game is utilizing both your Waters and your Fire Monsters. As circumventing advantage with each other. I should, I'm going to explain all the valence one by one. Uh, 
all the valence scale effects are exactly the same. Uh, the pendulum scale effect is basically that they can summon themselves from the scale to the monster zone. However, for the level 6 and higher valence, you need to control either a valence of the same faction or you need to control a perspective field spell between Shira Bancho and Conic Wizen. Uh, basically, Conic Wizen is the field spell that uh, is from the fire faction, and Shira Bancho is the field spell that is for the water faction. So, the Shira Bancho uh, can spawn a monster uh, from Spell and Trap to the main monster zone. And Conic Wizen can push a monster from the main uh, monster zone to the Spell and Trap zone. As, uh, granted, you have to be uh, adjacent to the column of another monster in order to do this effect. You can use both field spells during your turn and both players can use, uh, use the field spell. Uh, basically, the thematic of the deck is you kind of want to like switch control of cards left and right you just start gaining advantage with them and your opponent is going to do the same thing to you and it's going to become like a back and forth uh, plan between both cards uh, you've probably seen an effect very similar to this one and you actually have is basically snake eyes flambers dragon uh, the field effect the only difference is it does not interact with the graveyard and it's on separate field spells so the way you want to play the game is you want to use these field spells or use your monsters as like uh, resources and then you just spam the board with all these monsters. Uh, it kind of feels like a pendulum deck without actually pendulum summoning because you're mass summoning your pendulum monsters left and right and you're using cards that can move these pendulum monsters and they all have an effect if they're moved. Uh, Chinonomes uh, field effect is that it can add a spell or trap. Its movement effect is that it can add a monster. Sarion's effect is that it can negate or have the attack of a monster, depending on a coin toss. And if it was moved, it can either bounce or destroy a monster. Nazuki can uh, actually move a monster itself. And if this monster is moved uh, like on its own, you can special summon a monster that is in the spell and trap zone into the same into the same column. Hoyo uh, bounces spell and traps, and if it's moved, it can uh, perform a fusion summon, which you probably noticed they do have one fusion monster, which is the Arctos Twelve. So that's it for the water valence. Uh, for the fire valence, this one moves a monster uh, if it was special summoned. Uh, if this card is moved, uh, you can target uh, a monster that is in the pendulum zone and just move it to another spell and trap zone. Viscount can grab a monster from your extra deck, face up extra deck, a pendulum monster, and place it in the spell and trap zone. If it was moved, it can move it to the pendulum zone. A very important ruling involving Viscount because uh, it's super easy to cheat with this card. Uh, if you place a monster uh, via its first effect on the uh, Pendulum Zone, it is not treated as a Pendulum Scale. It's actually a Spell and Trap. Uh, it's so easy to, uh, for people to like uh, cheat with this card, so don't get cheated uh, if somebody does this. The reason you max out on this is because I feel like for pushing through boards or pushing through hand traps or interruptions, this is like one of the better cards to have because this card paired with Shira Bancho uh, gives you two bodies for free uh, after you get hand trapped or interrupted or you just want to keep going. It's basically two extenders. Mad Marquis uh, can roll a die to excavate uh, to excavate from the top of your deck uh, similar to how you excavate with prosperity 
but uh, the cars that you're excavating have to be valence. So whatever valence you add goes to your hand, the rest of them go back to your deck. Um, but that's the Viscount effect, I mean the Marquis effect. Uh, if it's moved, you can special a monster um, from your spell and trap zone if your die result ends on either t 2, 3, 4, or 5. So that's the explanation behind them. Uh, I will show you a combo and the combo kind of makes it a lot easier to understand the gimmick behind this deck or the dynamic. I already explained the field spells. Um, one of the best cards in the deck is solo activation. So uh, if you've seen my Centurion deck profiles, this card is pretty much Emblema Oath, but for Valent monsters. Uh, the other thing that it does that is really cool is that if you, any player controls a field spell, you can banish this from the graveyard and you can move a Valence monster. So, these are like what all the Valence cards do. I'm just going to separate the Valence portion. Now we're going to talk about other engines. If you seen valence in the past you probably noticed that the en uh, there are other engines that you can play in this deck uh, one of them is super heavy samurais another one of them are the supreme kings uh the other thing that a lot of people like doing with valence is they like to play like super gimmicky cards to just try to lock down your opponent for example uh stuff like fossil dina uh, stuff like Secret Village in the main deck, uh, like the Majesty Maiden, the Pegasus. Um, like, they pretty much just turned this into like a super extended combo deck that just puts out uh, multiple layer of floodgates and like obstacles to just make your opponent's uh, plays almost like, uh, like, inexistent i didn't go by that approach i kind of wanted to just play this deck as a pure either board breaking deck or like a really strong combo deck that can just like spit out bodies in the board and just make a lot of uh interruptions by a lot of different scenarios like you would do in traditional pendulum with that being said uh the engine i chose is the mythical beast engine and the reason I chose Mythical Beast specifically is because if you activate any of your Valence scale effects, you are locked into Valence from the main deck uh, and like in general outside of the extra deck. And it's, uh, this engine plays around the restriction because what you end up doing is you pop Master Cerberus. From Master Cerberus, you just add the Jackal King. And then Jackal King pops the Master Cerberus. And since you're, su you're summoning from the extra deck, you still are can fulfill this condition even under the Valence lock. Uh, after you end up using Jackal King, if you perform your Pendulum Summon, you can Pendulum Summon back uh, both Jackal King and like Master Cerberus. And they're both summoned from the extra deck. So again, you are not locked into the Valence restriction when doing this play. So that's it for like uh, the other Pendulum engine. Uh, Kyoto Spirit is just a high skill. Uh, this is the worst one. You kind of want to play like the Kar Karate. There's a Karate one that has like a field effect that can just uh, send to the graveyard anything that's adjacent to a Pendulum zone. Uh, this one just bounces and adds another 24-1K. So uh, for Monarch strategies, this card could be, co uh, could be good. Uh, however, uh, for this deck, you just care about the skill effect. You just care that it is a skill 9. Even though it does uh, have cool applications, uh, like I had in like one of my duels uh, during the 50-man event. I don't need to explain Fenrir. Uh, basically, uh, if you noticed, I'm not playing hand traps in the main deck. 
So I kind of just wanted to make sure to play as many equalizers as I can, and Fenrir is a very good equalizer. Uh, speaking of equalizers, uh, I'm going to talk about Eltergeist Metal Seek for a bit. Uh, this, in my personal opinion, is the second best normal summon we have in the game. Uh, first, first best normal summon being Snake Eye Ash. Uh, so what this card does uh, by itself is uh, you link away Melusik. Melusik can add Malwisp. Malwisp can special summon itself, and Malwisp can special summon the Melusik. So that's already three bodies for free out of just the Melusik. And uh, it can go even further because these are spellcasters, meaning that uh, if you, you, you can make Selene... Uh, and just reborn Melusik and yeah, keep playing the game and you just climb into a link 4 uh, you can uh, make like level 8 synchros if you decide to play the familiar possessed you can make Herald of Arclight uh, which you already saw in my Astro deck as well uh, this is a 1 card SP Little Knight this is a 1 card access code with 2 pops this is a 1 card uh, Heat Soul if you decide to play that uh, engine this card is just super incredible by itself this card I feel like one day uh, this card will be abused in some strategy and after people figure it out it will just start becoming an issue uh, in a very similar sense that we had with uh, math next circular uh, the one caveat from Melusik and the reason you don't see it in many decks in, or strategies is because it is uh, your potential normal summon. However, in a deck like Valence, where you really don't care about the normal summon, uh, this card is phenomenal because you're basically wasting your normal summon on a card that can safeguard your plays and also helps with combo extension. That's like one of the be most beautiful things about uh, Melusik. Uh, and you're also wondering uh, one thing, like for example, uh, Small World, like just having extra copies of Melusik in your deck uh, also gives you a very strong advantage. Uh, it really depends how you use your extra deck, but uh, basically just having six copies of like this is very similar to like uh, the three bonfire three snake eye ash uh, scenario in like the snake eye decks so if we talk about uh, spell cards uh, I chose uh, cold by and I chose talents because uh, we're in a hand trap, hand trap heavy format, so you kind of want to just respect hand traps as much as possible, and these cards help you do that. Uh, I think Prosperity is excellent in this deck. Uh, not only is it a deck that relies on very few cards in your extra deck to just like full combo, but uh, if people don't know the ruling, because it is a scary ruling, uh, you can actually banish Pendulum Scales uh, with Prosperity. So this is one of the few decks in the game that can utilize up to three, two to three prosperities in the duel while not being as hindered from a very limited extra deck. And then uh, the last card is Small World. Uh, so what makes Small World really, really good in this deck and the reason I chose to play in the first place is because there is uh, one monster in the game that uh, not only is part of your engine or win condition, but it's also a small world bridge for almost uh, everything in the deck. Uh, one example I can give is the Kyoto Spirit. Uh, Jacko King can get to Kyoto Spirit because it shares 2400 attack. It can get you to Mellow Seek because he's a spellcaster. It can get you to Fenrir because it has 2400 attack. If we go through the Valence portion, uh, it can get to Mad Marquis because it is level 6. It can get to Viscount because it has 1400 defense. 
and it can get to either this or this because spellcaster uh, and it can get to Hoyo as well but you're most likely gonna search Shinonome uh, the only one it won't search it would be Nazuki but Nazuki is kind of pointless uh, to be adding anyway with small world when you can just add it with Shinonome's effect and just use small world for another extender so uh, I really like this card. I think it's very highly highly to consider. You don't have to play Mellow Seek or Fenrir, uh, or you don't have to play like the Mythical Beast package. But uh, in a deck like this one, where uh, Chinonome by herself is like a plus four, uh, you don't mind uh, having minus ones uh, with Small World. If what you're trading for it uh, is a card that can just like out resource their opponent with advantage. And if you open like a combination of these cards, like for example, I open Mellow Seek and I open like Shinonome both at the same time, uh, this just becomes a very, very insane board because uh, I can I can show you a combo real quick. Uh, at least the me at least the Mellow Seek combo I can show you real, real quickly while we're discussing the deck. Let's say you open Shinonome and uh, Mellow Seek. You put Shinonome in the scale. You don't activate her effect yet. You normal summon Mellow Seek. And then you can link away the Mellow Seek. Ideally, you want to make a Link Rebo. Uh, although Artemis is also another option. You can make Artemis as well. But for the explanation of this specific combo, we're just going to uh, explain Link Rebo. Uh, Mellow Seek triggers. Metal Seek gets us to Malwisp. Because Malwisp was added, you can special summon it. Uh, Malwisp can just special summon back the Metal Seek. And if we're going with just Metal Seek, uh, you usually just end the combo here. And you make either Herald of Arclight. Or you make uh, IP Mascarina. Or you can just directly go uh, into SP Little Knight as well. So uh, this all can be done with just Mellow Seek. However, since we're talking about the Valence uh, Prince, Priestess, uh, something you can do instead of summoning all of these is you link all three away uh, into Selene. And Selene will gain one counter uh, because Chinonome is in the scale and it counts as a spell card uh, that's on the field. Which means you can use uh, Selene's effect, bring back the Mellow Seek, and then these two can just make a Palooza. Uh, you can also make Access Code, uh, and you have two pops. As I mentioned beforehand, if you decide to link away the Mellow Seek for Artemis, you can grab Artemis and Selene and make Abramax, uh, which is another option. And Abramax is a very dumb card. Um, well, I'm not going to say it's a very dumb card, but it's a card that not, lo not a lot of people think about. And that gives you a very big advantage because uh, this card is incredibly hard to out if you're not using Typhon. Like, and not, and not many players are playing Typhon in their extra deck at the moment, uh, which is really good for you if you end up summoning this, especially if you summon it uh, via the conditions of um, like IP. Like, if you make an IP protected Abramax. It's almost impossible to get rid of it. It's pretty much a towers. Uh, and it's kind of worse than a towers. Or better than a towers. Because it's a towers that can uh, make itself like get more attack. Uh, which is already hard enough to get rid of. And the other thing it has is that once it's sent to the graveyard. It can non-target remove a card from the board and send it back to the deck. Uh, and not, lo not a lot of people can play around this card without wasting a lot of resources. It's something that I've noticed. 
So that's pretty much like uh, the Melusic combo. Melusic itself is just a very, very strong card. Uh, the one thing that sells me on uh, uh, Melusic is that even going second, this card is not that bad because you can just uh, attack directly and then use this effect to just get rid of a card on the board. And if your opponent let themselves be attacked, uh, this effect activates during the end of the damage step, meaning that uh, not many cards can just stop this card from resolving if it actually hits you directly. And in the off chance they do get rid of it, let's say your opponent just need to get in and destroyed, uh, then you can use Graveyard Effect, grab Malwisp, Special Malwisp, and resummon the Melusik, and you end up with two extra bodies out of one card that your opponent used to interrupt this. So now that you saw the combo with uh, Melusik, I guess we can go back to Small World. Uh, like just having extra searcher for that card, uh, as well as your entire deck, uh, I think is really good. Uh, I already made a video talking about this card. I feel like if you're playing a lot of non-engine, like for example hand traps, and you're playing a very combo deck, uh, this card is really good because it kind of turns your redundant uh, hand traps or your like uh, like extra redundant hands where you have just way too many of the same resource. You, you can just turn them into other cards that you need. Uh, other extenders, other hand traps, other interruptions. So yeah, uh, I highly vouch for this card. If you're playing Valent and you can play this card in your deck, I highly recommend it. Um, my only main deck board breaker was uh, Triple Talents. Uh, you, I guess you can call it called by a board breaker in a sense, uh, at least for like freezing uh, Fire Princess, uh, the Promethean Fire Princess, and stuff like that. Uh, in hindsight, I should have played more board breakers, but I'll get to that explanation later. So now that I explained it in the entire deck and I explained like the factions in behind the valence monsters, um, let's uh, show you a combo. So this combo is going to be with just Shinonome. You will activate Shinonome's effect. Shinonome is going to spawn herself from the spawn uh, from the pendulum zone to the monster zone. And then uh, once per turn, you can add a Valence spell card. Uh, the Valence spell card that we're going to be adding is the solo activation. So what you end up doing here is you activate the solo activation. And with solo activation, you're going to be placing uh, either... either Nazuki or Buster Baron. Uh, uh, I'll explain the, di the difference between both, uh, but for this explanation, we're going to use Nazuki specifically. So here are the other valence. Uh, so we're going to spawn Nazuki from the spawn trap zone. Since we control a water valence, you can special summon her. We'll use Nazuki's effect, and Nazuki is going to move the Priestess. And for this combo specifically with Nazuki, we're going to be adding Hoyo. You'll see in a second why. Uh, so Hoyo is, your, is in your hand. And we're, we're now going to link away um, both of these into Beyond the Pendulum. We're going to use Beyond the Pendulum's uh, Pendulum effect. We're going to be paying 1200, and that's going to be adding us the high skill, the Kudo Spirit. Uh, if people don't know, uh, this effect uh, is not once per turn. However, after you resolve the effect, your Pendulum skills are negated, and your monsters currently on the field cannot activate effects until you Pendulum summon. 
So this card is really, really good. Uh, like on that regard. Uh, but it also has like a very detrimental side effect. So just be wary on that. So that being said, you're going to be activating the Kudo Spirit and you're going to be activating the Hoyo. Ideally, you want your skill 9 to be next to where the Beyond the Pendulum is and not your Valence. And the reason for that is because when, after you Pendulum Summon, you Pendulum Summon your Valence and then one of them is occupying the zone your Valence would have special summoned uh, from the Spell and Trap Zone. So we Pendulum Summon, these go on the board. Since you control Water Valence, you can Special Summon this. And these two are higher than level 5, meaning that you can contact Fuse with them uh, into the Arctos 12. And uh, Arctos 12, uh, basically what it does, it, it can switch the position of monsters. And at resolution, after it does that, uh, it can pop a card on the board uh, without targeting. And the switch effect is a quick effect. And the pop effect is a trigger effect after meeting the condition. So after you pendulum summon, uh, this goes back to your hand. And this going back to your hand is very important because it frees up your zones for extra valence that you want to summon. If you ever want to summon more. Um, one thing you can do is link away the Shinonome and the Beyond the Pendulum. And you can make uh, Exceed the Pendulum. And then you can use Exceed the Pendulum's effect to grab back the Shinonome. So essentially you end it with uh, Exceed the Pendulum, the Arctos 12, you have a not normal summoned yet, and your Shinonome is back in your hand, as well as the Kyudo Spirit. So you have a guaranteed Pendulum Summon for next turn. You have a guaranteed uh, follow-up from Shinonome because what you can do after the turn ends and you go back to your turn, you can just scale Shinonome and do and, and do the sequence all over again. Um, if you have the ability to Pendulum Summon with uh, like arrows differently on the board, it just gets significantly stronger like later on. And it kind of feels like old school Pendulums uh, because of this. Uh, you don't have to summon the Arctos 12. Uh, this is just like one of the things you can do. Uh, you can make like SP Little Knight. You can make IP. You can make a lot of different monsters. But that was just like the best example I can give. Uh, because that specifically works if you add Nezuki to your hand. If you don't add Nezuki to your hand. Uh, basically uh, what you're going to be doing is. You're going to start making boards. But you won't be able to get to the Arctos 12. So, uh, that's it for that explanation. Uh, if you open stuff like Meadowseek, it just gets significantly stronger. Because let's go back to the Meadowseek uh, Shinonome combo. If we add Meadowseek to this equation, uh, what you can end up doing is, uh, before you use the Shinonome effect, you end on Appaloosa. And this is pretty much like a safeguard play, like what you would see in like the Snake Eye deck. But essentially, you end on Appaloosa. The other thing you can end on is on like Link Rebo plus SP Little Knight underneath, uh, because uh, SP Little Knight is occupying two uh, zones for Pendulum Summon. But we're going with the Appaloosa explanation. So, Appaloosa is here on the board. Uh, these are the rest of your other valence options. You can activate Shinonome. Shinonome effect. Grab the spell. Spell effect. Move. Uh, effect. Just grab. Like. Well, actually, it, this, doesn't, this doesn't move you. You just scale the... the the Nazuki. Nazuki can special itself. Nazuki can move. This will grab us uh, the Hoyo again. You can link this to a way into the, the Beyond the Pendulum. 
Beyond the Pendulum Effect, you grab the high scale, and then you can just do this, scale here, scale here, and then perform your Pendulum Summon for both. This goes back to your hand, this gets summoned, and essentially it's the same combo, but you have a Palooza, and you have Beyond the Pendulum as a link too, so you can just make, uh, like for example, Exceed the Pendulum, and then Exceed the Pendulum grabs the Shinonome back, and you still have these two, and then you can uh, Fusion Summon into the Arctos 12. And you have the Arctos 12 set up, while still having the ability to just make other stuff. And this is not even counting other extenders that you can have in your hand, because every single Valence monster, like all of these Valence monsters that you're seeing here, they can all special summon themselves. Uh, so if you have any other one of these, this board just gets even stronger uh, still because uh, you have just more extenders, which means more bodies, which means more cards there for you to work with. Uh, one thing that you, one thing that's really good about this deck is, uh, like depending on what scales that you opened or what different monsters, you're going to have like different layered interruptions. Like if you open Fenrir, you can end on Fenrir plus this board, and you know Fenrir is just a very strong interruption by itself. Uh, if you have Jackal King, you have like a monster negate, a hard monster negate can that can pop cards. So this also working with this is also good. Uh, if you went the the Arc Light route, uh, instead of a Palooza, you can just have Arc Light as part of your end board, like as well uh, with all of this. And Arc Light is really strong against, like for example, the Fire King deck, because uh, this this pretty much puts them on a situation where they don't want to pop with Island, they don't want to send with Garunix, they don't want to like uh, like move other cards. Uh, they they cannot uh, Diabell Star to summon uh, if you send a monster. They cannot activate one for one, which is a very strong card this format. Uh, they cannot like uh, send for Nightmare Phoenix. Well, you can you can discard for Nightmare Phoenix, but it just gets banished. Uh, so they lose like layered synergies. Like imagine imagine imagine. Uh, like all those different boards, you can make a speed little knight as part of your end board. You can make Babuska as part of your end board. You can make uh, Avramax instead of IP, uh, instead of Apalusa. And Avramax is just really annoying because Avramax makes it so your opponent cannot attack any of these. So like f let's say for example you're facing off against like Kashtira, and the guy like kind of wants to use Zeus as part of their play. Uh, to get rid of this board, they need to run over this, uh, and you can never run over this card. Uh, so your it protects your arc light, it protects your sp little knight, it protects like a lot of stuff, and if you make this with ip, it's all it's even harder to get rid of this card. So that's uh it for like those explanations. And I'm telling you all of this, and we haven't even talked about like the interaction with the field spells, because the field spells also uh, give you even more combo extension with this deck. Um, if you have Chira Bancho and you have like Conic Wizen uh, involved, well, something that you can end up doing uh, is scaling, uh, like placing a monster uh, with Viscount's effect to the Spell and Trap Zone, and then use Shira Bancho's effect and just special summon the monster. That's the reason we were maxing out on Viscount, because Viscount with the field spells just becomes two extra bodies for free. Uh, like something really cool that you can do is like, for example, let's say you have D2 scales and you have the field spells, you can special, special, turn this into Artemis, because this is a spellcaster. You can turn this into Artemis. Use Viscount's effect, place it in the Spell Trap. Chira Bancho's effect, you can special it. And then you can turn these two into like Beyond the Pendulum. 
uh, and you know, and let's say for example they tried with Baylor or Impermu, you can uh, link these two away into a second beyond the pendulum because beyond the pendulum is not once per turn, and the only re the only way you get locked uh, from using more effects is if it actually resolves. Uh, this is why you play multiple of these, and now that I'm explaining that, I'm going to be explaining you why I played this deck this weekend. Uh, because just showcasing you what the deck can do, it's not really like, you know, a reason in itself. Um, in a format like the one that we have right now, it's extremely risky to play a deck like this one if you don't know what the cards do. So, why did I choose to play Valence? Which is kind of a mute point after like talking about the deck for 30 minutes. But the number one reason I kind of want to play Valence is because in a hand trap heavy format, uh, where you know that people are going to be trading resources uh, and trading engines with your hand traps, this deck really shines because uh, the more common hand traps, like uh, Valor, Imperm, Ash Blossom, uh, like uh, those cards don't really hurt this deck. The really high impact hand traps like Nibiru or Droll actually do hurt this deck uh, quite a bit. But there are ways to play around it and you do play cards that just pl try to insulate your combo from falling victim to those cards. That's why Melusik and Fenrir and uh, the Mythical Beast engine are really good. Is because they are supplementary monsters that complement the Valence theme. It doesn't really like uh, conflict a lot, but it can also insulate your plays against other hand traps. Uh, and that's like, you know, the best explanation I can give behind this deck. So, I took this deck for, for a weekend and I tried it out. Now I'm going to be explaining the cons of this deck and the things that happened to me during the weekend. So I played at uh, a tourney, at the 50 man tourney. It was six rounds of Swiss. Uh, shout outs to Israel. I did not even know about my sixth round because I didn't know there was a sixth round. But I'm going to talk about the first five rounds. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is I lost every single die roll except for one. And that's really bad in a deck like this one because I am not playing hand traps in the main deck. And I guess I should show you the side deck while I'm talking about that. Uh, my side deck was this. This was my side deck. Um, Essentially, I went by that full board breaker approach. I just kind of wanted to just like vomit my resources through the boards uh, because realistically, this deck can break almost every board in the game. It can even break the Snake Eye Fire King board if you just open good enough extenders. Uh, however, uh, one big issue in this format is uh, some cards that are really strong against this deck are being played this format well my my round first opponent was labyrinth and i lost the die roll they sniped a, a card out of my hand uh and there was an 80 percent chance i was going to lose on the spot because uh four out of the five card uh in my hand uh were pendulum skills and that deck is known for main decking stuff like uh dimensional barrier so the moment they would have saw like a uh, pendulum in my main deck, they would have just locked me out of the game uh, with Dimensional Barrier. Uh, that being said, they, do de they did deplete a lot of my resources. And Labyrinth is a deck where if they don't get hand trapped, it's going to be a very uphill battle because they're just going to be trading a lot of resources against, against you and force you to play like a very slower game. And that deck can play floodgates, which is a little bit of an issue. Uh, my second duel was against Kashtira. I actually won against them. Uh, something really cool about this deck is this deck can actually full combo even through Dimension Shifter. Uh, which is not uh, something you can say about a lot of decks, including Pendulum decks. 
So on that regard, I uh, kind of liked this deck. It was very, very helpful. And uh, my I, 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 I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think my MVP versus Skirtclaw was this card. And the only out to this card consistently in the main deck is um, uh, Kashitira Skirtclaw. And I already had a game plan for Kashitira Skirtclaw. So, uh, so uh, I pretty much made this card with the IP protection and he couldn't get rid of it. It was really, really hard. Uh, so that's how I won that round. Round three, I faced Snake Eye Fire King. Uh, I did a misplay. Uh, I think I'll ex explain the misplay on another video. I kind of want to do like a little bit of a tech analysis with this deck, and this deck profile is already long enough as it is. Uh, but essentially, uh, I was one card away from breaking their full board, and I forgot entirely that I had access to SP Little Knight uh, that can just banish their Fire King Island, and if they respawn with Appaloosa, you can just chain the SP Little Knight uh, and dodge the Appaloosa. By banishing it. So. Uh, that's what happened with my one of my Snake Eye opponents. Uh, I got Gimmick Puppet locked by Branded. I also lost that die roll. Uh, that was also not very nice. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty much like my tournament experience. Uh, this was a very very fun deck. This is not an easy deck to pilot. However. Uh. This deck can really reward you if you dig, if you build your deck well enough uh, for the format. Would I play this deck again? Uh, maybe. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, at least for tor for locals or like casual tournaments, I would probably take this and give it a shot. I decided to play at a high t uh, caliber tournament because I really like the challenge. I really just wanted to experiment. I wanted to test the waters. I wanted to see uh, how well I can do with this deck. And all the worst case scenarios that could have happened to me with this strategy happened to me at that event, which is very, very unfortunate. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to let that discourage me because uh, at the end of the day, I really had fun. A lot, none of my opponents knew what, they, what the deck did. Uh, people were almost misplaying left and right, um, which is a very huge advantage for this deck. And if we move away from Snake Eye Fire King format, I'd say, like, after a format is established, like, after a month or two, uh, I'd say, if you have access to this deck, uh, I'll give it a shot. Uh, it's really a lot of fun. It can, even re it can reward you from doing a lot of technical plays. Uh, don't cheat with this deck. It's super, e it's super easy to cheat with this deck, especially since a lot of people don't know what your cards do. Uh, but that being said, uh, I don't encourage that uh, at all. I just l l I just like playing this deck because uh, the gimmick behind it is very fun. Uh, this deck kind of reminds me of Unchained, uh, in a sense, and how Unchained was a very strong uh, board breaking deck. Uh, that being said, uh, I hope you found this video informative and to your liking and understanding. Uh, I don't think I covered actual absolutely everything. Like for example, I didn't cover talking about Secret Village, but I think it's kind of straightforward. Half your deck are spellcasters, and if you do this, if you do something like this as part of your end board, like n almost nobody can beat you. Uh, like one example is the Snake Eye deck needs to specifically open the Bell Star, and they have to summon that bell star, not activate her effect, and then run over this. And if you have Avramax, like alongside that, it's pretty much game over. Because like they, they won't be they won't be able to play through this board. It's almost very it's really hard. Uh, but yeah, that's just one of the very short explanations I can give about the deck. Uh, if anybody has questions involving this deck, uh, feel free to comment. Uh, comment it on the channel I'll be free to answer everything I'm free to make a follow up video there's really really a lot more than you can explain about this deck but it's already 50 minutes long um, but yeah uh, keep 
practicing and keep dueling. This has been week number 13 of Deck Report and stay tuned. <laughs>